everyone! For this Classic Movie Monday, I thought it would be interesting to look into two films. And these two films are The Godfather Parts 1 and 2. Now, I consider them to be classics um, because I think it's, it's almost a no-brainer. Uh, when you look at films and you look at film references and film in general... The Godfather is usually on the top of people's lists when it comes to one of the greatest two-part series of all time. Uh, and I thought it would only be appropriate to discuss these films in particular since I discussed the third Godpa Godfather uh, film last week. But without further ado, let me address why I think it has become so iconic. And I think, first off, we should say that the characters, plot, story, themes, and acting are all top-notch. Um, you cannot deny that um, the actors really do suit their roles well in these two films. You really do feel like that they are these people, and um, also with directing Francis Ford Coppola creates a very uh, interesting family dynamic, and really that is sort of the heart of what The Godfather represents as a film. It's it's really based within family and the family structure and sort of hierarchy, um, and it plays itself off as a as a sort of an opera and a, and being sort of a, a crime drama, so to speak, because um, there's a lot of tragedy that happens within both the films, and uh, that tragedy is sort of reflected upon the family and how ultimately the consequences that result from the family making various decisions and getting involved with crime and corruption. So, without further ado, let me discuss a little bit what The Godfather is about in case there are uh, a one percenter group out there that has not seen this film. Um, basically, The Godfather follows the Corleone family. Um, Vito in the first film is technically the father figure and one of the main focuses of the first film, and also the second film too, um, but in different ways. Uh, he sort of represents the um, represents the highest uh, authority figure within the family. A lot of people go to him for consultation. Everybody uh, respects. Vito uh, within the family. Um, and he basically is a mob boss, um, an Italian mob boss, and he basically sort of has his family sort of be a part of this inner circle. And um, this inner circle is fairly exclusive because, again, they don't really want to reveal sort of their identity and what they do behind closed doors when they're making very shady deals. So, again, it, it does revolve around this um, crime-centered world and a world of secrecy and um, deception and so on and so forth. So, that's at the forefront of both films. Um, but it's also sort of a, I guess you could say transitional film because you go from Vito being the leader to ultimately his son Michael Corleone taking over. So there is that sort of family dynamic of father to son, you know, passing the torch, so to speak, um, and you'll sort of realize the circumstances that end up resulting that lead to this if you choose to watch the films. Now, the first film, again, focuses on setting up the family, setting up the circumstances, setting up um, the conflict of the story, which does revolve around uh, feuding families. 
in particular feuding um, mafia Italian Italian mafia families, um, and Cor- the Corleone family happens to be just one of these families, and that's what it focuses on. The film, the first film in particular. And in the second film, it focuses more on Michael Corleone as he takes over and how ultimately this leads to sort of the family um, drifting even further apart from each other. And what I mean by that is is that the 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 crimes and the sort of corruption and secrecy really do hinder... Um, Michael Corleone. So we do see how he ultimately develops sort of into um, something completely different than what he started out being in the first film. And it's really, I think, more of a of a character study, the second film, but it does have these hints of tragedy and it's focused more on um, the inner circle sort of... Um, deceiving and manipulating each other and um, ultimately resulting in paranoia and fear of betrayal. And you'll see how this plays a pivotal role in the second film. And also the second film is technically a prequel because it focuses on when Vito was uh, young and up and coming and how he ultimately became what he became. So it's it's really interesting because you kind of see the parallels of how um, Vito becomes this mob boss and at the same time how Michael does ultimately the same thing as his father really ends up doing. So you really do see how family dynamics really play a role into people's lives and how ultimately they make the decisions that they do end up making. So it's it's a very pivotal film in that sense. Um, So what is it about The Godfather besides the cannolis and the Italian food and the uh, excessive violence and the the corruption and the drama? What, What beyond The Godfather and the family too, again, what is it else that the Godfather has to offer that puts itself on this high pedestal. Um, I'd say that it, it just the way that it executes all of these things from the characters to the themes to the, to the acting again, all of this is compiled in a way that makes sense and um, and you do feel something for the characters even though they end up doing horrible things you come to um sort of understand them because it does the film does a good job of setting things up uh and letting you soak in the environment that the characters are in so i i think it just has this universal appeal in that sense because it knows how to execute a film because it focuses it focuses on what what ultimately it's trying to represent which is family and putting it in this environment and soaking us into the environment I think really is what makes a film really stand out and I think The Godfather did a really good job of that and as a result we have good characters, we have a good plot, we have a good story, we have good themes and acting and so on and so forth. So that all comes from the the sort of premise and the premise is family and the trials and tribulations of family as a result of other family members actions or inactions. So, what is it that people complain about when it comes to these two films in particular? I think one is the length. Um, these th- these films are slow. They do not go at a brisk pace. They are not like a lot of films that are today where it's fast dialogue, it's quick, it's, it's to the point. This 
is a film where you have to sit and be in a mindset if you're going to sit and you're going to absorb what the film is saying. Because The Godfather isn't something that you turn your brain off. Um, you can't turn your brain off when you watch The Godfather. Uh, you just can't do it because you won't get it. Um, you might get certain concepts and ideas, but you won't get a full picture unless you really pay attention. Uh, and it's difficult to do. Yes, I understand that because, again, it is very long. There's a lot of dialogue. But I think the dialogue still works to the film's advantage because it's really trying to um, expose people to what the environment is. And the environment is these family dynamics and these family circumstances and the crimes that are involved with this inner circle of family members. So it only makes sense that I think there's a lot of dialogue. But again, this might hinder some people in enjoying the film. I'd say I think it's enjoyable for me personally, even um, even if I can't fully absorb everything. I, I still think that if you put yourself in the mindset of saying, okay, I'm going to watch this film, I'm going to take it in, then you will find, I think, some enjoyment out of it. But if you really... Oh, if you really feel like entertainment's more of an outlet for you to um, relax and turn your brain off and kind of not think all too much, then it's probably going to be difficult to to really get what The Godfather is is saying. Again, I, I think it's easy to follow in regards to maybe themes and environment and atmosphere, but... It's difficult to interpret plot-wise if you don't really pay attention to the dialogue and what's going on with the characters. But, um, I think that's really ultimately the only criticism I think people really have when it comes to these two films in particular. Um, does it have flaws? Absolutely, like any other film it does. Uh, but I think overall it does a very good job in executing what its main purpose is, and its main purpose is to exhibit these family dynamics. And although not every family is a crime ring, basically, uh, every family has their issues and uh, problems that they need to work out and get through and you kind of see too how there's certain family members who maybe get along better than other family members do and there's different values and mindsets that they that family members end up developing over time and you will see this in these films so I think that's just something that's very important to note um but ultimately, I think that's really all I can say when it comes to The Godfather's Part 1 and 2 without giving so much away. But if there are any questions, comments, concerns, I'd be more than happy to answer them. But until next time, everybody, bye-bye and thank you so much for watching.